How should SEOs use ChatGTP in practice? In Search SEO Podcast is brought to you by Rank Ranger, the all-in-one SEO platform that helps scale your business through data and analytics. Hello and welcome to episode two in a three-part series discussing what SEOs need to know about ChatGTP. In this episode, we're looking at how SEOs should be using ChatGTP in practice. I'm joined by Julie McCoy from Content at Scale, Ellen Conning from Salience, and Alizi Body, SEO consultant. Alizi, I asked ChatGTP to provide me with some questions to ask my guests during this conversation. Which one of the questions piqued your interest? So the one I'm going to pick is the one about uh, content generation. More specifically, content, I, I would go a bit sideways and go on to content uh, um, ideation. Um, so the question is formulated as, how can ChatGPT be used to generate content that is optimized for SEO? Just so everyone knows. And um, for this, I actually um, used the tool in a pretty precise way, I'd say, for a uh, whole content strategy uh, I did for a client a few weeks ago. And um, so I had this whole keyword research to do, and the topic was a bit tricky because I wasn't really used to that kind of industry. So it was a bit new for me. And um, I asked it to list the topics. So it was all about um, employer brands, like how you how you make sure your brand um, recruits good people, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. That was like the big problem we were trying to solve. And um, with the whole like great uh, resignation movement in the US, things like that, I started doing a little bit of research. And so what I did is just give, say to ChatGPT, hey, so we are trying to go the other way, <laughs> not, not go towards the great resignation, but to go away from this uh, with this brand. What topics should I research for my keyword research? What kind of terms should I use as seed terms to search for in SEMrush? And that would, um, well, provide content that uh, will um, uh, provide answers that will actually be useful to, for candidates. It was kind of a tricky situation. I have never really worked with that kind of topic before. And it gave me a really interesting list that was just kind of, well, reusing topics of the great resignation, like uh, work-life balance and things like that, and just taking the contrary, but formulating it in a way that users would actually search for it. Because, well, being self-employed, I haven't been confronted to that to those issues in a while. So it was interesting for me to see that point of view. And then I used those terms and then asked it to organize them, asked it to provide synonyms. And from that, I did my whole keyword research with all that bunch of data. And once I had my keyword research, I also had a problem, an issue with localization because we were targeting only the US and we had loads of keywords coming up from other places. So I just gave it the list and said, okay, now sort out any localization that is not US based, which would have taken me hours to do. <laughs> and it did it for me and it was so easy. And those like little bits of things that made my keyword research super valuable and from there, I took the main keywords that was, I wanted to use and generated content ideas for the clients with it, with a short description every single time saying, so the, to the, uh, the goal for this content is to talk about this, talk about that, the kind of tone we want to use, et cetera, et cetera. And it all generated it. I just had to reread and correct a few elements. And that was it. Breezy and fun. <laughs> so, so Elise, when you were asking ChatGTP for what terms should I use as seed terms, how reliable and up to date is this information? And should SEOs be concerned about missing out on chunks of opportunities? Yes, um, I think you want to do your research beforehand, which I did. Um, I had I checked out like articles and research doc documents about the Great Resignation Movement, for example just to make sure that it was in line with what I was seeing. Um, so there's always a fact-checking issue thing you have to do at the end. You, you always have to fact-check everything. Um, and 
yeah, it's uh, it's not. I mean, it's a hot topic right now, but it's been hot for about two years, two and a half years now, um, and it's not going away. So I consider it like kind of evergreen content, <laughs> evergreen topics. Well-being at work will always be on the table for candidates. So I'm not really worried about that. If it were to do something very, uh, for example, for the Olympic Games in Paris next year, um I wouldn't use ChatGPT for that. Uh, is that is that because um, of the the, the cut off and in data that it's trained on? Yeah, and because um, well, France being filled with French people, the amount of controversies coming up with this is well d- on a daily basis. So <laughs> there's no there there wouldn't be in my opinion as of right now there wouldn't be if we were looking to create very targeted content related to the Olympic Games in Paris. It would just it wouldn't be up to date, it wouldn't be reliable, it might not take into account all the details we have about this right now. Um yeah, I wouldn't trust it that much. And there's certainly been conversation around chat GTP being banned in certain countries, and I have yeah. heard France discussed around that. Is <laughs> what's the latest in that situation? Well, we've had other things to focus on, primarily retirement. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard of that. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, <laughs> we have other things to focus on in France okay. right now, and I don't think it's going to happen so far. We might, well, I they might like issue fines or things like that, but um, it won't be banned right now as far as i know and i'm um, otherwise i mean we all get vpns and it's fine yeah <laughs> well, what all the seos will do and what they probably normally do anyway most of the time uh, ellen uh, in terms of the questions that chat gtv suggested that i ask you which one appealed to you well i always like to look at things from a content perspective but obviously you've gone over that so brilliantly so one of the other ones that i found really interesting was how it would change the way that consumers use the web and how it impacts seo there's a really it's a bit of a silly story that's coming out in a couple of different things very different sector from what i work in now but something that's kind of new and dear to my past i was very briefly a gaming journalist and there are some online games where people are actually using chat gpt in the game to have full blown, blown conversations with people uh, there's various other games online where for better or for worse this is happening to the point where people are somewhat suspecting that they might just be talking to a whole bunch of different Jack GPT clients. Uh, that's a bit of a fun example which shows just how dynamic and how well trained these can be to fit into those individual cultures. In terms of SEO and in terms of the application that it's going to have, it's going to naturally change the way that we interact with content online and the way we interact with sites. When we look at the way that somebody navigates a site naturally, uh, from a content perspective, we look at what they're engaging with, but also where they're going from, or at least I do. I spend a lot of time on Google Search Console and Google Analytics looking at behavioural flow. Just It fascinates me to see how people go through a site. And using ChatGPT to, to target and research those areas that we might not be as aware of with clients. We've got for example, a client in the bedding space who there's a whole load of traffic that we weren't fully aware of going through a page that we have worked on, but it's never been a priority page. And so now we're looking to build out a whole strategy around that sector based on some of that data and other aspects as well. And I've been using GPT to research areas for content to surround that. Where the way that consumers will then interact with that content is by having an area that they wouldn't have previously been able to explore. They're naturally going to be able to directly interact with that site. There's other elements as well. The reason why I mentioned the in-game chat thing is because there's a lot of people looking for the potential of this into chatbots, into live responses, improving that experience. Nobody really wants to sit on the phone for hours and hours and wait to talk to a person anymore simply because of the cool time. They love talking to the person usually, but the wait takes forever. So having somebody who can automate, having something online that can automate that process to a certain degree, eventually it is never to be going to have to go to a person. And that's a good thing in my mind that it does go to a person. But if you can make as much work happen for people Let me rephrase it. If you can make it so that when they get to that person, they've exhausted all the other possible options in the best possible way, that's going to be an element of it. Not something I've had direct interaction with, but definitely one of the exciting areas that come out of any AI-led technology out there. Yes, it's amazing that even waiting on phone lines for up to an hour, longer than an hour, is a thing nowadays, but it is certainly a thing. I can attest to that from recent experience, but... uh, Julia, uh, what question from what ChatGTP suggested 
appeal to you? Yes. So the limitations and drawbacks question, I'd love to answer. Um, you know, something that I'm seeing at, in my role at Consonant Scale, where we're doing 50 million plus words per month, which for some context, I used to run a human only writing agency, ran it for 10 years, actually. And in one year, we did 10 million words. So this is like five years of content in one month. When you think about that moment of silence, <laughs> what? <laughs> but the limitations are a very real thing that um, it's easy to look over because of how much time it can appear that ChatGPT saves you. Um, but the truth is, like, it's still not perfect. And I think with GPT-5 on the horizon, AGI, the potential with auto GPT, well, that's getting into the other question of the future. We won't go there. But, you know, these things will get better and better. That's where it's headed. But right now, what we see um, in the mix of producing content that is ranking, we have clients that are going from a low DA to a high DA in a matter of months. And it's all AI content that's raising their DA. So it's pretty crazy. You can do this now. Um, but the limitations are, first of all, um, if you're in a new or emerging technology, if you write about AI... <laughs> That's one. Um, so, for example, we had someone use Consonant Scale, ChatGPT. Um, I got to see how they were prompting it to write something on AI detection. And what ChatGPT was writing was AI detection is a home um, security system. Well, that's not at all what it is. You know, so if you were to publish that, like, you're in a lot of trouble. So you have to fact check. That goes without saying, but... It is so critical. You know, I have a framework I built. I'm teaching writers to use it whenever they're producing AI content. And it's called craft. So first you're cutting the fluff. That's the C, the R, you're reviewing it. You're reading it for yourself. You're optimizing it with more keywords because um, that's another limitation of AI. You know, ChatGPT isn't going to go crawl Google real time and get what's ranking right now. And you need that to inform your SEO. Like that is a critical part of SEO content. So if you don't have a tool that does it, and I'll tell you, Content Scale does that. It's one of the only ones that does. But if you don't, then you generally need a tool stack like Surfer SEO on top of ChatGPT, human manual research on top of that as well. Um, you know, the tool stack can be quite a lot if you're using ChatGPT to write long form. Um, but the limitations are, you know, if it's an emerging technology, you're going to have to do a lot more human work to edit that content. And going back to the craft framework, the F there is fact checking because you have to fact check this stuff. Like ChatGPT will just BS sometimes. And, you know, OpenAI has said there is no source of truth. It literally is just picking data points and putting them together in the best way it knows how. Granted, that will get better and better, and we'll start to see a more factual, accurate model generate and evolve. But right now, like the factual inaccuracy is so wild. You know, it was in this piece we had it, um, I was trying to have it right on AI detection. It was stating that the client we were writing it for was the inventor of ChatGPT. So also can't publish that. <laughs> so the limitations around factual accuracy are you know, quite real, as well as th just the nature of going and looking at the top of Google for yourself and getting those insights. Now, will Google change? Well, that's another question. You know, there's a lot of speculation there. And maybe that's a question we could bounce around here. You know, what will that look like in the future? I mean, that's that's a crazy question. Yeah, you touched upon the future a bit there. We'll bounce about that in the next episode, because um, Google have released BARD. Um, Google are wanting to compete more with OpenAI and um, the other technologies coming. Um, chat, um, uh, GTP5 rather, is um, is on the way, probably, um, I guess, probably towards the beginning of next year. There's talks of it um, completing its training by December of this year. But let, let's cover that and um, what the future might look like for SEO in relation to ChatGTP uh, in the next episode. But just um, re remaining on prompts just for a moment. I think it'd be great just to get one maybe additional prompt if possible um, or an idea to incorporate as part of a, a, a prompt. Um, now, shall we stick with Julia? Julia, um, do you have any additional tips, tidbits that you can provide in relation to prompting ChatGTP? Yes. Yeah, so I found ChatGPT great for the content generation around SEO content. So I haven't found it great specifically at long form, but for 
um, headlines, emails, outlining things, research, strategy, like Elise, brilliant examples. Ellen did as well. You know, so that's what I found it incredible at saving time. So for example, um, with our SEO content and traffic increasing, we needed a backend sequence to capture that traffic and help convert them. So basically it's called a post enrollment sequence. So, you know, I have to write this five email sequence. I'm sitting there, hmm, blank draft. I don't have to do this anymore. So I go to chat GPT and I ask it, help me create a series of five emails. And I actually ask it for the strategy too. So how I would prompt that is, um, here's my customer base. You know, we are a SaaS tool. I'm going to give it the context. And then I'm going to tell it I need a post enrollment series that will help them convert over to an offer with this price point. I need it to expire within seven days. And I need you to tell me the strategy on when to send it and the headlines of each email as well as a synopsis for each email. So giving it that context, you know, I hit go, the green button. And within minutes, I had a, an amazing five email series that I don't think I could have improved on just the actual idea for it in the writing of it. Like I'm going to have to go create videos, supporting content to make that content good. So the actual content in those emails, I'm going to write, create more content for, uh, but the supporting content for an SEO campaign, I've just found it brilliant at, it just saves so much time and money and just the cost of hiring someone to do that, like was completely eliminated. <laughs> which is still crazy to me as a writer the past 10 years that we're here. But, you know, prompting it with context is a big That's the word that, that really summarizes your advice there, context. Yeah, you mentioned the fact that you have to say that you're a SaaS tool. This is the offer. This is the price. You know, if you don't provide that context, it's going to be bland. It's going to be generic and it's not going to appeal to your target base. So Rowan's advice there. This is the second episode in this particular series, but um, we are going to get Ellen's and Elise's answer uh, to that prompt question in the next episode. And thank you for listening. Check out all the previous episodes and sign up for a free trial of the Rank Ranger platform over at rankranger.com. <laughs>